Hey people, welcome to another tutorial. Uh, I apologize in advance for the for the noise on the microphone. Uh, I'm going to to buy one next week. So in this one we are going to make a kind of a pile of worms. Uh, this was a test that I was researching for a project that I am working with my my buddy Shambo. So this is the the effect. that we are going to, to create. So this will be like, like the last one, uh, not a step-by-step -step tutorial, but uh, more than a walkthrough. And you can take the, the heap file later from my website and, and analyze by yourself. So first we have a sphere where I scatter some points, five points, and I copy this this line to the scatter. So we have like five small lines. Then I transform to to change the origin. And this grid here is what is going to be the collider of the all the particles that are going to, to fall. So from here we have a pop network where all the stuff happens. So if you can see, we start with these uh, lines that we duplicated. And if we dive into the popnet, we have, as first input, we have the geometry. You can select here points, scatter. I select the geometry that I, I had in the, in the object node. On beard, I have one. And then I have a pop bob just to to add a p scale because the, I have a p scale of 0 0.02 because the pop grains uh, needs that parameter to to work correctly. So what the pop grains do is that um, the particular particles aren't going to to collide with the, themselves. Then we have the, the pop wind. It's just some some wind forces, and the pop sprite. This is for for visualization. I I, I put a circle here, and then uh, the collision detect, and I selected the the grid that is here. If you can see, if I select the grid as a ghost. Okay. And we hit play. You will see that it turns red when the the particles collide with the with this grid. So this is what this node is doing here. Then I have a pop solver, a sub solver, sorry, that is just resampling the the lines because if you if you turn this off. You will see that the the lines are are more straight. So with this resample, we are doing the adding some points, so it will be like more smooth. You can also add a, a smooth up here, and you will have like more or a convert node, and you can change here to to north, north curve to add the, some more smooth lines. So going back, uh, then we have the the gravity, and that's pretty much the the pop stuff. Then, uh, if you want to convert this to to geometry, you can add a, a wireframe that will make the the stuff like you can change the radius here and. You can export this with save geometry and select a name and put dot obj at the end. Uh, or you can add a polywire that it will be like faster and then add a subdivide. Or you can export the polywire to, to Cinema 4D and add a, a, a subdivision surface. So 
uh, what I did in one of the of the tests, I converted this to PDB and then to back to polygons, and I imported to to ZBrush, and with the in flat brush, they came, for example, to one of these uh, ends and inflated. Then Dynamesh with the with Dynamesh here, and I started sculpting some faces just for for fun. It's super low res, but I was just also if you want to. To add some more dynamism, you can you can inflate some here, or you can come to the deform tab, and in the inflate balloon you can press some some values. You will see these kind of artifacts that look nice. You can also come to to masking. Mask by cavity or pixel and valleys. Yes, you can mask by pixel and valleys and sharpen mask, then inverse and play again with the with the deforms settings. So you will have a mask in, in certain zones. Um, here are some test renders that I did quickly on Octane and Sino 4D. This is just with the with the gold material that comes with the with the live database. This is the ZBrush version with some subsurface scattering. This I think this is the the one that I use on the on the tutorial cover. And this was trying some some emission inside the the worms. If you want to work faster within Cinema, what you can do is you can export uh, the splines as an alembic file, and then import it to to Cinema. And if you have octane render, octane render, you can add the the octane, octane tag with render as hair, and it will look like with some some geo. In this one, I use just a, a texture that I found on on Pinterest, and. And finally, uh, I want to show some some other stuff that I did using basically the, the same setup. Uh, this will be pretty laggy because they are GIFs. So this is the, the same setup, but using like uh, shorter worms. This is again the same setup doing a an infinite mess. Be careful with, when you when you try to do this type of things because Houdini will probably probably uh, crash. This again is the same setup, but instead of using lines, I use it um, a sphere with a mountain mountain top, and then convert that to BDVs, and it looks kind of some liquid. It's strange liquid. This is pretty much the same as, as before. Some geo kind of melting but without using flips but uh, some some pop. Again some geometry falling apart and the resample node on the on the pop net is doing like this effect at the end. So I'm going to, to upload the hip file to, to my website.
this is the same setup, but using instead of a plane, using a, a zipper scalp to, to fall on, to collide on, on, on them. So I hope you enjoy it and.